and we are live. Welcome, mystery and thriller fans. I'm your on-air host, Sarah DeVello, and I am thrilled, pun intended, to host the absolutely incredible Lou Ann Rice today about her brand new book, The Shadow Box, which is blazing up the charts, getting incredible press. Lou Ann, welcome. Tell us about The Shadow Box. Thank you, Sarah. It's such an honor to be on your show. I love it. And oh, as I said nice. earlier, you have the best social media of anybody. <laughs> it really is amazing. Um, thank you for the warm welcome. So yeah, the Shadow Box is a thriller. It's um, the you know the second um, that involves a couple of detectives, recurring characters, and it takes place here in Connecticut, which is where I live. Um, it, it, I kind of write a lot of my novels about. Black Hall, Connecticut, which is really based on old Lyme. And uh, there's a lot of dark crime in this beautiful little area of the world. Ooh, well, I cannot wait to hear to hear more, to hear all about it, to hear all about, uh, about the story of this book and the stories underlying this book. Um, Luann, you have written 36 novels. My God, woman, teach me your ways. You're absolutely incredible. Um, and I want to talk so much about how you do that and how you write these books and all of your incredible accomplishments, as well as this book, which is getting amazing reviews. I've got to share some of them. But first, I just want to welcome everyone who's watching on Facebook. Welcome. We're so happy to have you. If you've been here before, you know how this works. And if you're new, here's how it works. Every Tuesday, I present you with two incredible thriller and mystery authors. And this is your chance to ask them anything. So you get to ask Lou Ann Rice anything you want about the shadow box or her other books and she'll uh she'll get your she'll take your questions so just get them going right in the comments and i will get them right over to to her gail top community member saying hi round two this time you're on time gail welcome back thanks for joining us anissa also top community member giving us hearts um gail saying old lime is beautiful <laughs> luann you've also lived in new york and boston but now you're home in your ancestral home where lots of writing has happened um tell us does 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 the place where you write matter do you feel that energy how does that help your writing it definitely does in a way i can i feel like i can write anywhere and i love to write in hotel rooms it's my favorite thing but wow. this this place is really it goes way way back um my grandparents built it the year of the big new england hurricane 1938 and it survived that storm and i feel like it's a real metaphor for life because it survived a lot of storms emotional and uh you know and weather and all kinds of things uh, and i i was able to, you know, I'm very lucky. I was able to keep it after my mother died. And she was a writer. She was an English teacher and a writer. And so a lot of my early writing really took place here. So I'm very inspired by, you know, I feel like this little house has soaked up so much love and so many stories, so many tears, um, you know, and a lot of ghosts are here, a lot of ghosts. And so I, I listen to the ghosts and they guide me very often. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Um, do you think these are the ghosts of your family members or are they pe other people around the area or who are who are these? Do you know? I would say that my family members mostly. But I, so I live on a point. And, um, you know, if you if anybody who reads my books probably has heard of Hubbard's Point, which is the fictional name for where I actually live. And it, it's literally a point of land that jets out into Long Island Sound. It's like this rocky ledge full of trees and full of like a kind of coastal forest. And when I was a kid, it was a, almost all the houses were owned by women. Either they were women who'd never married or women whose husbands had died or parents had died. And they were just amazing, every single one of them. One was a, an opera singer and a teacher who used to teach Dionne Warwick. So I would wake up in the morning and hear Dionne Warwick singing scales. Um, one of them was a very eccentric woman who uh, was kind of a botanist and, a, and a, um, an archaeologist. And she discovered uh, a pretty interesting cave where the Eastern Woodland Indians had used it as a fire pit, you know. And, and so I feel like those women are definitely haunting me <laughs> and, oh, and cheering that. me on. Yeah, they're blessing me. 
and blessing you with their presence and their feminine power, their divine, sacred, feminine energy. That's in, That sounds amazing. And I love that most of the houses were owned by women. How unusual, especially for that time. It Really true. And I mean, true eccentrics, wonderful. And I say that with like so much love and respect. Um, and one, one in, whose name was Miss Davis, her house was called Shadow Ledge, which I just love the name of that. And Ooh. it was so overgrown and hidden by like vines and and you know impenetrable tr uh, pine trees and and sweet peas who knew that sweet peas could like cover a house and you know and she she would wear like this straw hat that was really raggedy a summer after summer and i just i she was a witch for sure that <laughs> but, sounds amazing oh wow i want to come live in your neighborhood <laughs> Well, the questions are already coming in. Um, for Adis saying, I hope I'm saying that right. She's saying, hi, Luann, Adis here, just a hello. So good to have you here, Adis. Uh, question from Andrea. She said, Connecticut, California, Paris, do they inspire you differently yet? Yeah, tell us about these different places. Well, first, hello to those two wonderful women who are also two of my great strengths and friends. And uh, Andrea is actually my oldest dearest friend who's also my literary agent yay welcome andrea good to have you here and we've gone to all those places together so she's got an inside track on that but they do inspire me differently and i you know connecticut is home base for sure and no matter where i live because i do set my novels here in this town in this area most of them um i'm I, it's always been my touchstone so when i did live in malibu california I would write about here, you know, and I'd be able to conjure it up. And same with Paris. I lived there for a little while and Andrea and I've gone there a few times, uh, traveled there together and I've written about Paris and I always will write about Paris. It's very special to me. Oh, do you speak French? Uh, I wouldn't, I never would claim to speak French. I can get by in French. My sister uh, Maureen is married to a Frenchman. She met him during the America's Cup on, when he was sailing for the French team and long, long time ago. Because they got married when they were like teenagers. And so compared to them, no, I don't speak French, but I can get by. Very cool. Well, that is more French than I speak. Um, in, in, in so interesting that you say Connecticut is home. In 2002, Connecticut College awarded you an honorary degree. What was that like? Well, it was really very special for so many reasons. One, it's a wonderful college. And I attended it. I went as a freshman, but I dropped. I had to drop out um, a couple of reasons. My dad got really sick, and oh. there was yeah. And I, I just didn't have the emotional fortitude to be able to study when he was so sick. Um, and I, you know, I had I had really bad depression, which I mm -hmm. speak about freely to help others. If there's anyone listening, um, you're not alone. And it, Love you that. know. It's, so I, I dropped out and um, started writing, you know, and I, and I had already been writing, uh, you know, from when I was little. My mother used to submit my stuff to newspapers and magazines. But um, many years later, you know, after I was published and had quite a few novels out, my college, you know, reached out and asked if, the, um, if I would donate my papers to their special collections library. So I've done that. And at the same time, they gave me an honorary degree. And it was very moving to me to have that cap and gown on and to wish my parents could have been there. Um, they both passed by that time. But, you know, it just was really meaningful. And I love them. That's incredibly meaningful. You were also awarded an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters from St. Joseph College in West Hartford, Connecticut, just getting all these honorary <laughs> degrees, Luann. Congratulations. For a college dropout, it's not too bad. <laughs> a college dropout with 36 New York Times bestselling books under her belt. Um, and fun fact, many of Lu Luann's um, books have also been adopted into uh, on-screen entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to hear more about that. We have a question um, from Muffy asking, Will you go back to writing stories like Beach Girls and Firefly Beach? Hi, Muffy. Um, another very familiar name. Um, I will. I mean, I. It's hard for me to separate them in a funny way. Uh, I think I know what you mean. I write write a lot about families and relationships, and in both Beach Girls and Firefly Beach, there wasn't maybe such a strong, direct thriller suspense element. But I've so yes, I will. And I I also believe though that. You know, I just believe that suspense takes place under the roof of one's own house. 
And so maybe I'm being led in that direction at the moment for some reason, but thanks for that question. Well, it's a direction that I am loving over here. And clearly I'm not the only one um, because the shadow box has over 27,000 reviews, four and five stars, over four stars, five star reviews on Amazon. So clearly this book is resonating. It is burning up the charts. Muffy saying exactly. Um, she agrees. Thank you for that great question, Muffy. Keep them coming, everybody. This is your time to ask this incredible incredible, best-selling, um, revered author, anything you want. We're so happy to have her here. Um, and I want to share just a few of these amazing reviews. So Kirkus Reviews, who I believe the New York Times called reliably, curmudgeonly, um, and notoriously, what was it, notoriously grumpy or something, they raved about this book. And they, uh, they said that, I'm going to get it right here, get it up on the screen, um, they said Rice's compelling heroine and crisp prose lift her brisk thriller. So uh, crisp prose, that is goals right there. So tell us about writing brisk, a brisk thriller with crisp prose. How do you do that? <laughs> That's a, I don't know. I mean, I, I suppose, I mean, I'm honored. Thank you, Kirkus. Um, uh, wonderful to get that review from them. I, I think that the brisk thriller part is more a function of being a reader, you know, of really loving books and loving story. And I you know, and and so, you know, delving into like reading and and having things, you know, absorbing, right? Absorbing books and absorbing Oh. A pacing maybe um, and knowing what I like to read, you know, and also very much so coming from a family of storytellers. I mean, I think about that now, how lucky I, I was. Like, I wish I could show you like, right around the corner the, this little dining room table. And, you know, my grandmother, who was from Providence, Rhode Island, her relatives, we didn't have a phone back then. And nobody had phones at the beach. And they would just show up unannounced. Like, all of a sudden, they'd show up with, like, boxes of Hi. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Welcome. And and they it's a small house, but Aunt Josie would always stay for a few days with Grandpa, who was uh, our great grandfather, and I could just remember the their voices, you know, in the the stories and the stories and the way they'd laugh, and I could listen for hours, you know, and I feel like that is that got into me, you know, and uh, I don't know about the Chris Prose part, that might be more, um, you know, my mother being an English teacher. <laughs> Oh, oh, I love that. I mean, I think to earn with your incredible writing, uh, you know, to have Kirkus praise your crisp prose, that's a real acc accolade. I mean, that's well earned. Congratulations. I mean, that is seriously goals. It's a great honor. Yay. Um, Liz is wondering, you have so many titles, again, 36 books. Amazing. Which would you suggest to start with as an introduction to your writing? Yeah, so if someone's new here, we love connecting readers to others. If someone's brand new to you, Luann, where should they start? Oh, well, I think you don't really have to start with anyone in particular. They're not linked in that way. They're not a series per se, but um, I'd ask you what you like to read, Liz. Like, do you do you enjoy thrillers? I think if you're watching Sarah, you probably do. So if you do, I'd say you could start with The Shadow Box um, and the one just before it was called Last Day. Uh, and then, you know, if you like other kinds of books, um, there I don't know, it's really hard to know without knowing what you like to read. But I don't think you can. there can be a mistake in terms of where to start. There is no going wrong with Luann Rice books. <laughs> so uh, Liz, let us know, circle back and let us know where you started and what you think. We can, we're, we're sure you're going to enjoy them. So come back and talk to us. Uh, ooh, good question from Gail, top community member, asking how do you use old lime in your books? Oh my gosh, that's like one of my favorite questions any ever, ever. Um, Old Lyme is really beautiful and it's it's a, an interesting town where it's it's on it's at the mouth of the Connecticut River and Long Island Sound. So it's full of beaches and woodlands and and tons of Connecticut history. Um, it's the birthplace of American Impressionism. And I write a lot about art and there's a lot of art in the shadow box um, and in Last Day. Uh, so it, very much the, those, you know, those kind of subjects, but also 
I love when people who are from Old Lyme, and Edith Smith is one who is such a wonderful reader and friend, um, who they, they always tell me they love recognizing things that I've slightly disguised, like the old fish market, you know, or old hallmarks. Sadly, the fish market just got torn down. I'm so oh. sad. Um, but hallmarks, which is like our local ice cream stand and, you know, the library. And so, uh, you know, just it, the landscape is very inspiring and beautiful. I love that question. Thank you, Gail. Gail always has great questions. Oh, Gail's saying she she tries. You oh. you succeed with your great questions, and she loves Florence Griswold Museum. I've actually never been to Lyme, so this is old Lyme, so this is wonderfully helpful. We would love it, Sarah. It's and and that museum is one of my favorites. I'm very big supporter of them, and I love them, and they they play a role in this book a little bit to some extent. Oh, I love that. Um, let's get over to your review from Publishers Weekly, which raved that this is a gripping psychological thriller. Prepare to be up all night reading. And Luann, you are keeping me up all night. So what do you think as a writer, how do you do that? How do you create a gripping psychological thriller? How do you keep readers up all night reading and not losing interest? Can you give us some, give us your secrets? Well, is there a secret? I mean, I, I mean, it truly comes from the character. So creating a real character who is truly a, like so real to me that I believe she exists. Of course, mm -hmm. she aspect of myself, um, maybe one of the darker aspects of myself, some somebody who suffered something. And, you know, and then to sort of imagine what happened to her. Now, in this case, in the case of the shadow box, it was I was writing it almost concurrently with the disappearance of Jennifer Dulos. Um, maybe some of you know about that case, a terrible case where a woman um, who was from Connecticut lived in New Canaan and was uh, with five, she had five children. She was separated from her husband, and she disappeared. And what was discovered in her in her garage was a crime scene. T so much blood that she's been declared dead, although her body hasn't been found. So that was that was keeping me up all night. That I that story. Where is she? What happened to her? What's going to happen with her kids? Um, her husband immediately came under suspicion. And you know, and that whole story is another thing. But to me, that is those real life stories of what seemed to be a really normal, beautiful, enviable family, and to mm -hmm. know things behind closed doors are very different. Um, so that's how I keep that's how I keep the story going. I love that. So juxtaposing what is presented publicly on social media or, it, you know, in, in, in real life interactions of, of this rosy picture and then and the disparity between that and the re, and what's going on behind closed doors. That's your point of fascination. And, and it's really interesting that you mentioned going on on social media and, and a lot of crimes, a lot of dark crimes breed a whole um, kind of subgenre of Facebook pages. So, you know, there are like Justice for Jennifer Facebook pages. And I sort of tuned into those while I was writing the book. And I would read these passionate stories of people, some who knew her, some who were just intrigued by the case, some who'd been affected by domestic violence, because there is an element of that in, in, her, in her story and in the shadow box. Mm. Um, and when I was writing that, I decided, and I won't say too much about it, but in the shadow box, there is an there is a sort of connection with Facebook where somebody who's trying to solve the murder, solve the crime, goes on Facebook and encounters somebody that changes her life, changes everything. And so I, I think that that's like the, a story of our time, right? That we're very engaged with each other. In fact, people who are who, you know, who've been saying hello here, I only know from social media, and it's so great to, that they're here. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah. And actually, Booklist um, mentioned, and I'm just going to put this up briefly because it's covering our faces, but the, a decade, a decade, decades old crimes lead to current murder in a case unwound through the efforts of strong women um, with a core of appealing characters. Rice, known for domestic fiction and romance, has the makings of a promising mystery series here. Um, I love that. And I love that you tied it to this fascination with that we all have with true crime and, you know, our need to know and our need to seek justice and to see justice served. Um, and thank you for telling us that about this this case local to you, because um, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's true. It's just justice served is something we all care about, I think, and can get very involved in stories that have to do with people we relate to. Exactly. In, in real life. And then hopefully fiction writers can, you know, come close in some ways. Exactly. Um, a, a great question from Anissa. She said, who is your favorite character? And she clarifies in the next comment, your favorite character to write and mm -hmm. why? Ooh, great question, Anissa. Tell us, Luann. Uh, well, in the shadow box, yeah, I'm assuming you mean in the shadow box. And, and I would say it's Claire. It's the main character, Claire Boudry Chase, because she is, she's really fascinating to me. She's an artist. She's a very powerful, strong um, independent woman who marries a man that she is madly in love with, who's very powerful and who has a lot of powerful friends. And sh almost immediately after she says, I do, it turns out he's got a t complete alter ego and she sees this monster come out in him. And then she has to question herself, like why, how, who's the real one? Who's the real guy? Um, she suspects at the beginning of the book, she is attacked and left for dead. She doesn't know who did it, but she suspects it's her husband. She doesn't know who to trust. So I just loved like writing about Claire and having her grapple with those questions and, and grapple with what, not only what was done to her by him, but was sort of done to her by herself, you know, how she stayed too long, mm. how she, you know, and how he separated her from her friends from family and how that she's had to like deal with it. So I loved, I loved writing about her. And there's one other I loved um, mm. at the, I won't say too much about her, but her name is uh, Spencer Graham Fenwick. And she's a very strong character who, who I won't tell you, but she plays a pivotal role and she's inspired by my friend, Cynthia McFadden, the, the journalist, uh, who, who's on NBC, you see her on the Today Show often, and, and, she, and she does amazing stories, like just incredible going to the limits kind of stories. I love that. And your grappling, to use your word, your grappling with these issues has yielded, as Publishers Weekly has said, a gripping psychological thriller. So your grappling yielded <laughs> a gripping psychological thriller. So it's working out for you, Lizanne. Absolutely. Um, thank you for that. Um, Liz would like to clarify her question. She said she, she loves historical thrillers connected to the New England coast where she's lived and summered on the Rhode Island coast. Wow. Um, so yes, I think there's... what. Um, she's saying, what what book would you recommend there? Wonderful, wonderful. I just got back from Watch Hill, Liz. I just spent the weekend there with my sister. Um, I love Rhode Island too. And I, so all of my novels are set in New England. Historical thrillers, I haven't written much in the way of history. A lot of my novels will harken back. Uh, so there will be kind of ways that the past comes into the, the present day and affects it. Um, but as far, I don't really have a historical by per se, but, um, you know, one book that is set on the Rhode Island shore is, uh, there are few, but one in particular is The Edge of Winter. And if you, if you're from Rhode Island, you probably know about the submarine that was sunk during World War II off Block mm -hmm. Island. And, uh, it has a lot, there's a lot of that in, in that novel. Well, that sounds like a great place to start, Liz. Or you could just start with a shadow box because this book is getting such incredible reviews. Um, Criminal Element saying the shadow box is a captivating read as much for its illuminating portrayal of domestic disenchantment as for its requisite and robustly handled mystery elements. <laughs> um, ultimately, Luann Rice has given us a deeply affected, affecting meditation on how we both lose and find ourselves um, and that she is a luminary in any and all literary realms of her choosing. What a beautiful and uh, incredibly accurate review. So Thank congratulations you. on that. Oh, Muffy is saying The Edge of Winter was one of her absolute favorites. Yay. It's great. I love hearing about that book. That was very dear to my heart. The World War II stuff was very much based on my father. So. Oh. Very cool. Um, you also got a rave review from none other than Harlan Coben. Amazing. He said the shadow box is Luann right at her dazzling best. My goodness. High praise from Harlan Coben. He's saying filled with dark family secrets and wells of deep emotion. This novel will stick with you long after you finished reading. That's so cool to hear Harlan. 
uh, <laughs> very, reading about very this. generous, very generous, and a good friend. Somebody we, we go back very far, and he's one of the most generous writers. He's he's lovely person. Um, very, very cool. I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody's anybody's questions. Um, Luann, do you like, you said you, you see a lot of people here from social media that you've never met in real life. You like hanging out on social media. I do. I, I think there's a tendency to like it too much because, you know, <laughs> you're on your computer writing and it's so easy to just take a break and go, oh, I'm just going to check Twitter or Facebook or you know, Instagram. Um, so I really try to limit it. And I I don't answer as many, you know, lovely notes as I should. And I wish I could answer more, but I always appreciate seeing people and I do get to know them over time, you know, and it, their comments really mean a lot to me, uh, even when I don't ha have the time to write back personally. But yeah, I enjoy it a lot. Yay. Well, I'm just throwing all of your links right into the comments. So everyone, you can hang out with Luann on the platform of your choice. You can hang out. I just posted her links, to Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Luann has over 47,000 fans on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> an incredible testament to all of the wonderful books she's written and the loyalty that, that her readers feel for her. So come and hang out um, on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, whatever your pleasure is doing. Um, we're also broadcasting this live to to YouTube and Margaret from YouTube is saying, <laughs> oh, you mean like she's doing right now, hanging out on social media. Margaret, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Uh, Margaret's also an author specializing in English and Scottish historical fiction. Margaret, great to see you here. Okay. Um, so yeah, hang out with, ha come hang out with Luann on, on the platform of your choice. I just put them all in the comments. Um, Luann, let's talk about um, family secrets. So this, um, what's the fascination? We you know, what, what do you think that, that that is? Does it make people feel better about their lives? Do we, are we just endlessly nosy? What do you think the, the deal is? Well, okay, so for my own self, I guess, uh, I, so I grew up in a family, I was the oldest of three sisters, and I grew up in a family that was so full of love but oh. so full of secrets and so full of in a way, like an inability to really talk about things. I mean, I think in some ways it does go back to my father being in the war and tremendous trauma with that. Mm -hmm. did. And, you know, I grew up in the, you know, sixties, I was in high school in the seventies and it think people just didn't talk about it. People, guys yeah. in the war didn't talk about it at all. And no. the way it affected him, we just kind of didn't know what to do about it or say about it. So when I became a little detective when I was very young. And I remember trying to figure out what is the unhappiness in our house. And mm. I would, I, like really when really young and there was a, we had a storage room upstairs in our, we had a small house. I shared a room with two sisters and between our room and my parents' room, there was a storage room. And in it, there was a, a chest of drawers. And it was sort of like the, the holy grail to me because I felt like everything I needed to know was in that chest of drawers and I would go through it. I would like, I, I read my parents' love letters. I, there was a box that my father had brought home from, or it contained his, his discharge papers and his medals and he'd been shot down. It had his rip cord from his parachute from when he was shot down. It had, it had letters from these three sisters. He was rescued he, when he was, he was shot down by the Germans over occupied France and he was rescued by three sisters in the resistance who brought him home and hid him in a barn. And um, wow. And I wanted to find them so badly. And he was engaged to somebody, a woman in London, and she was killed in a bomb. Um, you know, so, I mean, there was just so much. And I felt like those are family secrets. You know, did my mother know about all this? I don't even know if she did. She probably didn't go through his drawers, you know, <laughs> seriously. Um, so I think that's how it got started. And yeah. and I guess I just feel like we all have things, you know. Um, yes. There's a, you know, there's a family Bible in the other room that I, there's some inscriptions in it. And I found out, I mean, it's not a bad secret. Some of these are good secrets. But I found out that Mim, my grandmother's mother, came over on a, a boat they immigrated from uh, England to Rhode Island to Providence and her, her mother, her Mim's mother turned 13 on the boat and her mother 
my, who would be my great grandmother or great great grandmother, gave birth on the boat on the passage from England. And my great um, Mim's mother helped deliver the baby. And so he, she was allowed to name him. And so she named him Percival. <laughs> oh, gosh. I know. So things like that, they're just so dear, you know? And, uh, but then you just start questioning, you know, and asking more and more and more. So. Wow. Oh my gosh. I am loving this conversation. Um, ben McPherson saying, ooh, family secrets. Actually, actually Ben's British. So it'd be, ooh, family secrets. Uh -huh. um, ben is an incredible a British, a British author based in Oslo event I hosted a few weeks ago for his brand new book, Love and Other Lies. Ooh, um, ben, so title. great. Isn't that the title? You just want to yum, 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 yum. You just want to gobble <laughs> that book up. I mean, it's such a great title. Um, Ben, it's so great to have you here. Thanks for joining us all the way from Norway. Um, so and wonderful to have um, one of our fellow alumni authors um, of the show. Thanks for coming back. Great to see you. Um, and yeah, I think that's such a, exactly what you said. I mean, I mean, who could resist your mother apparently having more strength than, than you and I, Luann, because I would be going through those drawers. <laughs> I know. I don't know why she didn't, or maybe she did. That's the thing I'll never know. But back to Ben for one minute. I had a really wonderful visit to Bergen, Norway. Uh, my friend Bill Pullman, the actor, was playing Othello at the, um, at the National Theater in, in, uh, in Bergen. And I fell in love with um, <laughs> with Scandi Scandinavian noir, just like the amazing darkness of Scandinavian novels. And I'm wondering, I, I'll have to really check out more about Ben so I can figure out where his noir comes from. <laughs> yes, you have to check out Ben's book because yes. Ben, uh, Ben, Ben's wife is Norwegian, and so they live in Oslo. Ben's British, and he, um, and he is so fantastic and so thoughtful, and his depth um, and thoughtfulness and the contemplation that he brings to the book, and his um, his book is is taken from a. Um, a, a crime, a shooting that happened there, and it's sort of you know what would happen if your child was away at at camp, and and there was you know the worst has happened. Um, oh. So it's Ben's amazing, um, and he's saying that he's loving this conversation. Ben, so great to have you. Um, so check check that out. Um, Lee Whoa. Goldberg, the number one New York Times bestselling author, who's also been on the show, said um, every family has secrets, but in Luann's Lu Luann Rice's clever thriller clever thriller, the truth won't set you free. Um, so I'm loving this review. I just put, popped that into the comments. Um, Margaret from YouTube saying that difference between what you know and love and what you can feel under the surface, the secrets must have gone some way in planting the creative writing seed. Ooh, um, what do you have to say about that? Really perceptive comment, Margaret. And I could not agree more. I think, I really think it's so true. I, I, I always think of writers, I, I mentioned this, I was speaking to a class of eighth graders yesterday and trying to sort of explain like what writing, you know, getting at something, trying to get at something. And I think of writers like tigers with a thorn in our paws and Ooh. like, you know, and that something is there that you're trying to get get out or get to the point to relieve the pain, really, you know, or relieve mm -hmm. some kind of uh, let off the pressure, I guess. And I, I do think that when I was young and I was, you know, kind of tormented by what was wrong and trying to figure it all out, that that did kind of lead me to want to be, be a detective, not so much writing thrillers, but writing novels about families that did have secrets or that did have a tr trouble you know, the trouble under our own roofs, I guess. And so I think that was part of the creative seed. I was afraid to write about that stuff when I was little though, but I always, I started writing poems and they were all really bad nature poems, <laughs> but um, you know, mostly about the seasons or the stars or, um, but it did eventually lead me to this. And you are an incredible environmentalist as well, um, which, which is, uh, wonderful and so important so thank you thank you for that um i just realized we are over our time i'm having so much fun i, I oh. forgot to look at the clock i was supposed to put this lightning round up uh eight minutes ago but we'll, we'll keep you for just a few more minutes luann if anyone has any last comments or questions for luann we can squeeze them in under the wire um because it has been such a joy uh, uh having this chat and, and hosting you 
Um, uh, oh, Margaret is saying that it is such, that's such a great metaphor. I totally agree. Uh, she's saying really bad nature poem. She can hashtag relate. Oh, and I'm sorry, I missed a question. Um, what is your favorite social media platform to interact with people? Is Do you have one? I, they're all really different. I bet you everyone on here feels that way too. I've, I really love Instagram. I think it's a gentle platform. And by the way, almost everything I post everywhere, it's either one of three things. It's either, you know, writing, cats, and my nature photos, because I, I love to take uh, photographs. So I do like Instagram a lot. Um, Facebook, I'm on there a lot less than I was for some reason. Um, I think it's because it's so absorbing and there's just so much to do there. I like Twitter too. I really like Twitter. It's brief and it's kind of, and I'm very careful. Like if anyone's negative, I don't really, I don't engage at all. I block, you know, it's like mm -hmm. life is too short to have negativity and any kind of, not that I receive it myself very often, but you know, if I see that's the vibe, you know, I just don't want that in my life. So. Um, but all three, I like all three and I'd love to see everyone everywhere. Please mention, you know, Sarah, when you come on, so I know where I've met you, Mighty, Mighty Mysteries. Uh, oh, yay. Yeah, Ever, I love connecting on social media. So please, let's keep the conversation, the conversation going. And, and you know, I think it's interesting what you said about negativity, you know, um, of course, Chrissy Teigen just famously left Twitter this week because the negativity became too much for her. And she just said for her mental health, mm -hmm. she said she could feel the negativity seeping into her bones. And that was the, that was the word she used. And that's a terrible feeling to have that infiltrate, to feel the infiltration of negativity or toxicity. Um, and it does happen on Twitter a lot, although I've seen it on Instagram and Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. People feel free to say horribly mean things that I hope they would never say to someone's face. Um, and so I thought it was really fantastic that she just said, I can't do this. And she she closed her account, even though she had a platform, you know, and a number of followers mm -hmm. that that most of us can only aspire to. I, I admired that a lot, too. And I think that during the time of the election, it became it just it reached this terrible volcanic awfulness. Yes. Um, in bullying. And I, so th since then I've felt it sort of calm down, but I'm very careful about who I, who I follow, um, you know, and, and I love, yeah, I, you know, I wish that we had more time because I'd love to hear what your followers hear, what they like to see in social media from writers. Um, you know, if, if some writers talk all, all about books and all about writing and people like me, talk, I think I talk more about my inspirations, you know, not necessarily related to writing. Also cats, I do. <laughs> I'm surprised I <laughs> In, but there, I have cats. Um, so yeah, but I'd love to see you all there. Well, let's all go hang out on the platform of your choice and keep the conversation going. Let's tell, um, you know, tell Luann, tag Luann, tag me, tell me, because that's a great question. What what do you want? What do you want? Do you want to hear about the inspiration? Do you want to just hear about writing? Do you want to hear about the rest of our lives? Um, do you want to hear, you know, people get more passionate or, you know, I just come here for the escape. I think it's a question. It's a riddle that we're always trying to solve. Muffy saying oh, you post the you. best pictures, Thank especially you. of the beach. You know, when we're done today, I'm going to post a picture of the beach for all of you and it will be dedicated to Muffy for saying that. And uh, yeah, I really, and you know, one other thing about social media for writers, I, can, I know that it can be used as a pr platform for promoting and for, I don't do that. You know, I feel like mm. I love my readers so much and I love that you find me, but for the most part, I will sometimes post like something, but for the most part, I really like to just connect with you as human beings and as, you know, fellow lovers of the beach or of the earth or of art or of your cats or your dogs, <laughs> your family. So, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Muffy's saying she, thank you so much. She loves that. Yay. I think we all do. That's fantastic. All right. We all got to go see Luann's beach picture of this. And, you know, I just want to circle back to what we, to, what, to, to the mental health aspect of this, because you shared very bravely and very um, compassionately early on in the interview that you talk openly about um, your struggles with depression, as I actually talk openly about my struggles with anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, and you said very beautifully that you do that to help others. And I do it for the same reason, because I think there's so much shame around this and there's so much stigma around us and we need to get rid of all that beat us and get just right down to it. Um, my friend and yoga student Judy is a retired therapist from Massachusetts General Hospital after 35 years as a therapist she just retired and she actually told me that requests for therapists 
um, request for anti-anxiety medication and requests for antidepressants are up 600% since the pandemic descended. Um, which means we're all struggling. I know I have struggled um, during the past 12 months and we are all affected in different ways. And I want to make the conversation about that more okay and more out in the open. Um, so thank you for that, Luann. Well, thank you, Sarah. And I'm sorry that you struggled too much. I think we all have. And, and it's wonderful that you have this platform and you share that. I I was, when I was, you know, very, very depressed at one point, I was hospitalized at McLean Hospital, which is a wonderful mm -hmm wonderful psychiatric hospital in, in, in Massachusetts. Yeah, and I love them. And I, they saved my they saved me. They were so good. And uh, they asked me to do something a few years back to be part of a program called Deconstructing Stigma. Yay. So uh, many of us, some public figures, some not spoke out. We told our stories. They put these gigantic posters of our faces up in in a uh, Logan Airport, so people walking down the concourses would see our pictures and then read our stories. And mm -hmm. it, according to McLean, it really has had a, a good effect that people did see them and it caused them to reach out and hopefully get help. And there's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, it's it's it, nothing to be ashamed of. Life is hard. You know, life it's, is hard. It's hard. And, pand and pandemic life is harder. And right. if you're not affected, maybe you're not paying attention. <laughs> Because these are trying times, and we're again. I am struggle. I have struggled. I mean, especially this fall before the election, um, and and periodically throughout this pandemic. And uh, and I know that I post a lot of, you know, perky fun stuff on social media because I find social media fun. But that doesn't mean that I'm not struggling. And um, and I'm I'm happy to have this conversation. And and that we're putting this out there because we need to make it okay for everybody to put it out there. So totally. And thank thanks. For, thanks for circling back on that. I really appreciate it. And oh. I'm, if there's anyone out watching us right now, you're not alone. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Ask for help. There's all kinds of hotlines. And, you know, I'm sending all my love and support. Yes. And get a therapist. Therapist is, therapists are life changing. Um, and, and, and you no, know, yeah. And I love that. I want to second that you're not alone and we're all in this together. Yeah. Luann Rice, you are incredible. Thank you so much for joining us for this eye-opening, mind-opening, heart-filling conversation. Um, what an incredible honor to host you and to share this time with you. Thank you to everyone who's joined us today. And grab your copy of the Shadow Books. The link is in the comments through bookshop.org today. And you can support independent bookstores and get this great book. Um, and Mark is giving us hearts up from YouTube. Wow. Thank you, everybody. And we will see you next time right here for Mighty Mysteries. Have a great day. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you everyone.